Hi, Shalom friends. One of the one of the best known and least understood stories of all of the Chumash is really the beginning, the story of Genesis, the story of the first couple. It seems to be so simple, straightforward, and fascinating and interesting. And yet, <clears throat> the more we delve into it, we realize how how much depth there really is and how many lessons we could glean. And indeed, as many times as we think about the story and we reread it from year to year, our comprehension grows and our amazement grows at how this story is so pertinent and relevant to each and every one of us. One of the major parts of the story is that there was a beautiful place on earth called Gan Eden, paradise, and there was this beautiful couple called Adam and Eve or Adam and Chava, and everything was fine until the serpent got involved. And then we have the, the subsequent part of the story where they eat from the tree of knowledge and so on and so forth. If we had to uh, perhaps describe the state of man and woman before the eating of the tree of knowledge, we could perhaps could use the word innocence. And in fact, there's one verse at the end of chapter two which so clearly defines that period of time. As it says, they were both naked, man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. So what comes to mind is, you, sometimes you see children playing by the seashore, they're not really maybe wearing anything, and they're so, they're, there's such a lack of self-consciousness. It's so natural and innocent that we, we, we we actually smile when we see it. It's like a, a time that has passed by each and every one of us. But the fact that it says they were not ashamed seems to imply that they were born with a sense of shame, but in terms of clothing, they did not feel ashamed. And I'm wondering, what does that mean, that they were born with a sense of shame? <clears throat> Today, there's another word that we use constantly instead of the word shame, and that's called embarrassment. Now, embarrassment are, and shame are absolutely two separate worlds, but we're much more familiar with the concept of embarrassment. Any, any party, inevitably, someone will say something embarrassing that happened, and that often, is a, uh, that's often sparks another conversation. Oh, that, that was embarrassing. You know what happened by me, and so on. Sometimes it's used in, in therapy. What are your most embarrassing moments and why do you feel that they were so terrible? Why can't you forget them? And sometimes it's used just for literature as, as a means of expression to, to, to use something of a sense of embarrassment to delve deeper into the consciousness of a person and so on. But you'll notice in almost all of the cases when we think of the word embarrassment, it's always in a relationship with others. So there's a tremendous amount of embarrassment which we associate with clothing. For example, uh, I went into, if you were to go to a backyard um, barbecue where everyone is wearing shorts and sandals and you come in wearing a tux and a, a gown, you would be embarrassed even though the tux and the gown are beautiful and very appropriate in, in certain settings. But in this setting, it's, it's actually embarrassing. Obviously, if you were to go into a state dinner wearing sandals and shorts, you would be equally embarrassed. In fact, it's not really the clothing or the lack of clothing because the way most people are dressed by a beach, they would never be seen like that in public. It would cause them complete embarrassment, they would be mortified. In fact, you could hear an expression, I would die rather than being seen like this. And yet, in a beach-like beach setting, the lack of clothing doesn't seem to bother too many people at all. If you think about uh, the embarrassment of, I uh, misspoke, I spoke like an idiot, I, I forgot my speech, and so on and so forth, I mispronounced words, Again, it's always with and in context of others. So 
At home, most of us are not embarrassed if we make a mistake in language. Most of us are not embarrassed if we're walking around in, with the clothing or the lack of clothing or inappropriate clothing. Most of us are not embarrassed if we fail in, 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 in making our cake. It's only when we have to serve it to others that we get embarrassed. Shame is a completely different world. Shame is something inner. It has nothing to do with outside at all. It's actually your standards. In fact, if I were to say it as a mathematical equation, it would be like this. Shame, the definition of shame would be what a person thinks he's capable of minus what he is. The quotient is shame. Shame is a very, very powerful and important part of humanity because it, it holds us to a standard of excellence which other people might not and cannot notice. Shame is ruined and destroyed when it's confused with embarrassment. So for example, let's say there's a person who would be ashamed or has a sense of shame to talk uh, and use language with a with a woman in a certain way. So what does he do? He goes online and gets himself a false name. So now he's not embarrassed anymore to talk the way he talks or to see what he would ordinarily be ashamed to do. But now that he has a different name and he will not be embarrassed, he thinks that his inner shame will be quieted. And it often works temporarily until after a while, the discord, I'm not embarrassed, and yet I'm ashamed of myself, becomes overwhelming and often leads to destructive mental breakdown. How early does a person cultivate shame? And actually, it's at, at some of the earliest stages of life. Even children have a sense of Shame. They have a way they see themselves, even though they cannot articulate it. And they feel shame when their image of themselves is not being recognized. A very practical example is sometimes a child. It could be five years old, it could be eight years old, and um, gets a compliment from a parent or from a friend or from a family member, and they're very well-meaning. Oh, you're such, you're so smart. Look what you did. Or you did, I saw the way you cleaned your room. It's so beautiful. Why anything like that? And the kid, instead of being excited about the, the compliment, actually takes it cold bloodedly and often resents it. And you say, What did I say wrong? I try to make him feel good. I complimented on the good. And the answer is there's an inner sense of excellence. The child, as a five year old, or as a 10-year-old knows, he could have done better, and he should have done better. And the fact that you pander to him um, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't sit well, because he knows that he's so much more capable. So even a student that gets an A when he knows he should be getting a C, very often does not owe the, uh, the teacher any favor whatsoever. So now let's talk about shame in terms of us and God. And that is what keeps us moral, what keeps us straight is the inner knowledge that actually God created us with immense spiritual powers. Or to put it simply, we could be very good people. We really can be. We're not, we don't have to um, degrade ourselves with activities which at best can be likened to animals and at worst, it could be likened to evil. We know that. And the truth of the matter is, many times we recognize that. And then there are times when we fail or we forget. And that's when we feel shame. And that shame is actually very, very healthy because it motivates us and points us in the right direction. So without a doubt, embarrassing others or the sense of being embarrassed, by and large, is not something to be cultivated. But 
having a deep humility based on an inner sense of shame is actually quite healthy. Interesting enough, and I'll end with this thought, in the Hebrew word, to return to God, which is another way of saying, to elevate your activities to something more godly, is the word teshuva, return. But actually, in those very same letters, we have the word boshas, shame. When a person realizes that he can, should be, and will be better, then that shame causes him to change his life. So next time you meet someone who has a sense of shame, don't try to say, it's okay, it's okay. Actually, compliment them that they're on the level of understanding excellence. Shalom.